Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to lecture 9 of our human resource management course. In this session, we are going to talk about the HRM and legal compliances. So, we will talk about what labor laws are, why are these labor laws important, then we will slowly move towards the various highlights of the new four labor co codes and then we are going to discuss these labor codes that is the labor code uh, sorry the code on wages 2019 code on occupational safety and health and work conditions 2020 code on social security 2020 and code on industrial dispute 2020 so uh, before we begin our course it's important for us to understand what these labor laws are so labor laws are also called as employment laws basically they are the sets of laws, the administrative rulings and also the precedents which address the legal rights of and restrictions on working people and their organizations. So, these labor laws actually mediate uh, many aspects of relationship between trade unions, employers and employees. Uh, in other words, labor laws define the rights and obligation as workers, union members and employers in the workplace. So, generally the labor laws of any uh, country, you know, the labor laws prevalent in any country include various issues related to the administration of wages, the industrial relations, the kind of certifications which are required, the labor management relations, collective bargaining industrial disputes, social security, uh, then uh, the safety, health and work, environment framework for the employees. So, all these things actually are including, included in labor laws. So, uh, today we are going to talk about uh, this particular thing in detail and uh, before moving forward, I would like to throw some light on why are these labor laws important. So, Labor leg legislation that aligns with the economic and social challenges of the contemporary work environment basically serve three essential purposes. Now, let us figure out what these essential purposes are. So, the very first uh, purpose is it establishes a legal framework that facilitates productive individual and collective employment relationships contributing to overall productivity of the economy. So, within a legal framework the individuals may operate so such kind of guidelines such kind of legal framework is basically provided by the labor laws of any country and definitely by offering a very structured view or uh, by offering a structure for employers employees and the representatives to engage in a work related matter it acts as a significant mechanism for fostering harmonious relationship grounded in workplace democracy which means by means of it harmonious relationship in the organization can be ensured and definitely uh, some kind of workplace democracy can also be ensured by means of it. Number three, it serves as a steadfast and cons consistent reminder as well as a kind of guarantee of fundamental principles and rights at work. So, by means of labor laws, the employees are aware of, they are better aware of their rights at work, they are better aware of what they are supposed to follow, they are aware of the framework within which they are supposed to operate, they know what to follow, when to follow, where to follow and also they enjoy widespread social acceptance. So, furthermore, it outlines the processes through which these principles and rights can be implemented and enforced. Uh, there are several uh, labor laws which are important in context of, uh, you know, India also. So, a lot of changes have been made uh, recently 
in the uh, framework which is given typically for the labor laws. Earlier there were many laws which uh, were acting independently for uh, governing various kinds of settings. But uh, now with passage of time, it was realized that it is important to focus on certain areas. And uh, since many of the labor laws which were there, many of the provisions were, were, uh, which were there dated back their origin, they can uh, you know we can say that uh, they trace back their origin to the British Raj. However, the changing times many other many of uh, them either became redundant or they became ineffective or we may say that they did not have any contemporary relevance. So, basically there are n number of reasons why it was uh, it was felt that this is the right time to rethink on the labor laws. So, what were the reasons? The very first one was many of the labor laws were tracing their origin to the British Raj as I mentioned. Then some of the laws were either becoming ineffective, they were becoming redundant, they were not of contemporary relevance, so on and so forth. And rather than protecting the interest of the employees or the workers, these provisions became difficulties for them. The web of legislation was such that the workers had to fill four forms to claim a single benefit. So, there were a lot of problems and there were a lot of uh, uh, you know flaws in the already uh, existing system prior to these changes. right? So, it was felt that there is a dire need to bring about some kind of changes and rethink on it. Therefore, the present government has repealed the non-useful laws. There are several laws which they found were redundant and uh, ineffective and they do not hold true in today's uh, situation. And uh, to ensure ease of doing business, to ensure ease of uh, access, ease of doing business and uh, uh, to run the organization in a smooth manner with respect to the labors and the framework which is to be provided to them, it was felt that it is important for us to take care of certain things. And therefore, therefore, it was felt that the non-useful labor laws need to be repealed. So, several laws were repealed as a part of it and ultimately after careful thinking, rethinking, it was, it was actually felt, it was actually found that there are 29 labor laws which still hold relevant and uh, they are very important for smooth governance of any organization. They provide a very good framework for industrial uh, setups, organizations, the employees, employers and therefore, it was decided that 29 labor laws need to be codified. They need to be codified into four labor codes. So, it is very important for us to before moving further, it is important to understand the need for these four labor codes. It is very important because uh, these are uh, somewhat recent changes which have been brought about in the uh, system. And now, instead of having too many labor laws and uh, you know, instead of uh, having too many labor laws and also complicating the situation, it was felt that there are only four codes which are uh, important and the entire set of 29 laws can be put under four codes. So, we will try to delve into what are these uh, labor codes all about, why do we need these labor codes, what is the purpose of these labor codes and certainly how these labor codes are beneficial for all. So, let me first tell you about the various laws, I mean the various codes which have been propounded in this context. The very first labor code is the code on the code on wages. So, basically to ensure workers right to minimum wages, cement, uh, you know central government has amalgamated the various laws pertaining to wages and they have codified it into the code on wages. So, they have come up with one wage. Now, we have one uh, code of wages or code on wages 2019, which is basically the amalgamation of few of the laws related to 
the wages. For example, payment of wages, it talks about minimum wages, I will be discussing all these things in detail in the uh, time to come, but for now I think it is important for us to understand what all laws have actually come under the ambit of uh, the code on wages. There are few acts which have come under it that is payment of wages act, minimum wages act, then equal remuneration act and then payment of bonus act. So, this particular talks about, so this particular code actually talks about all the things in detail which we will be taking up in the time to come. Uh, then second law or the second code I must say which has come into picture is code on occupational safety, health and working conditions. So, basically this occupational safety and health and work conditions code 2020 is again uh, is again an amalgamation of around 13 laws. There are 13 laws which have been amalgamated under this and uh, some specific things have been repealed as a part of it and uh, 13 laws have been amalgamated to form this occupational safety health and work conditions code. So, it is a very very comprehensive framework for ensuring occupational safety health and work conditions to the workers. So, this is called as code on occupational safety and health, uh, health safety and work conditions 2020 code. Then the third code that we are going to talk about is the social security code. The third code is social security. The individuals who are working in the organization need to be protected against n number of risks, they need to be provided adequate amount of social security. So, there were n number of laws which were governing social security in India, there were so many acts which were governing social security in India and 9 such laws have been amalgamated and they now form essential part of the social security code 2020. So, again it is very interesting, we will be discussing about the various uh, laws which uh, come under the, I mean which, uh, I mean uh, the various laws which have been amalgamated and how they have come under the ambit of one specific uh, code called as social security code. And at last we have an interesting code, a very important code, industrial dispute code 2020. So, this code is basically the amalgamation of around 3 laws pertaining to the industrial disputes. So, in all we have uh, 4 plus 13 plus 9 plus 3, 29 laws. So, all these 4, 29 laws have been codified into 4 specific codes. Uh, now, let us delve deeper into all these uh, codes and it is very important for us to understand what do these code actually talk about, what kind of uh, benefits do they bestow and how they have been very very successful in doing so. Now, I am going to present you with some highlights on uh, why these codes are important and uh, the specific highlights pertaining to code on wages, code on social security, code on occupational safety, health and environment then and working conditions and uh, more so I would be throwing some light on industrial disputes also. So, uh, let us talk about uh, the code on wages first. So, code on wages if we talk about code on wages there are few benefits that it bestows upon people and let me just first uh, give you some highlights on how is it important. So, as I told you that there are 4 laws which have been amalgamated into the minimum wages code due to this the for, for the first time all the workers have the right to minimum wage. So, this act this particular uh, code actually applies to whole of India, everybody has an you know has a right to minimum wages that need to be paid to the people due to this all the benefits all the people will be benefited 
in terms of right to minimum wages. So, after 73 years of independence, work is being done to provide wage security, social security and health security to good number of people. You know, uh, so I was referring to one of the books on, minist of, uh, on the website of Ministry of Labor and Employment and uh, I found this booklet talks about the various issues pertaining to the various code on wages, code on social security industrial dispute etc. So, code on wages certainly ensures the right to minimum wages to the people. Then after 73 years of independence as I mentioned work is being done to provide wage security, social security and also health security to a good number of workers. Now as a part of it even there is a provision for reviewing the minimum wages in every 5 years. Then guaranteeing timely payment of wages to the individual. So, there are n number of provisions related to guaranteed, uh, guaranteeing them timely uh, payment of wages, then reviewing the uh, minimum wages which have been set for them every now and then, every five, e five years they are supposed to be revisited and then also to secure the right to the individuals to get the minimum wages. Besides this, there are n number of uh, factors which were addressed to smoothen the process like for example, to remove regional disparity, to remove regional disparity in minimum wages, the provision of floor wages has been introduced. So, uh, there are n number of benefits which have been included in it and uh, several things have been included to smoothen the entire process of administrating the wages to the people. And also the wage ceiling has been increased from 18,000 to 24,000. it is with effect from 28-8-2017. So, these were some of the highlights of uh, you know code on wages and uh, it is important for us to now understand what all chapters does it entail, what all does it include and how is it important to take care of those things. So, we will be talking about each and every code and I will give you a bird's eye view of why these wages uh, you know what all is there in these code of wages, what are the various chapters and uh, you may get a summarized view on code on wages as well. So, let us get uh, started, we have already uh, talked about certain highlights of uh, code on wages, what kind of benefits it bestows. Now, let us talk about certain important aspects of code on wages. So, when you talk about different chapters, chapter 1 for example, talks about the definitions of uh, code, chapter 1 basically talks about the various definitions related to uh, wages, related to accounting year, advisory board, you know appropriate government, so on and so forth. Then uh, it also has a provision for prohibiting the discrimination. So, to bring about pay parity it has been uh, specifically, there are several provisions which have been specifically given in context of prohibiting the discrimination of uh, wages based on gender. Then uh, there are certain provisions related to payment of minimum rates of wages notified by the appropriate government. Then uh, there are some aspects associated with fixation of wages as to how the wages need to be fixed. If for example, it is the time work rate wages or piece rate wages, how should they be administered? What should be the basis of time work and especially uh, if you talk about time, you know time work, uh, setting the time work wages for the people how is it supposed to be done or uh, how is it to be done on hourly basis, what can be the basis for daily basis, what can be done for monthly basis, all these things are defined there. 
how to calculate the wages is yet another concern. So, there are several aspects related to calculation of wages and for calculation of wages the unskilled, skilled and semi skilled categorizations are there and then there are components on how the minimum wages should be given to the people, how much minimum wages should be given to the people, what basis should the minimum wages be revised, then procedure for fixing and revising the minimum wages, then power of central government to fix the floor wages, this concept of floor wages has also been uh, included in it now. So, uh, the code talks about the power of central government to fix the floor wages and uh, especially in the cases when the uh, you know there are times when the individuals who are working in the organization are working for less than uh, the normal day what should be the basis for that all these things are very well defined under the code on wages if for example an individual is employed in uh, two or three more classes of work two or more uh, classes of work so how should the wages be administered what should be the minimum piece rate wage what should be the minimum time rate wage all these things are discussed then there's a chapter separate chapter about payment of wages the fixation of wages the time limits the deductions which are supposed to be made from uh, the employees uh, salaries particularly pertaining to the wages so it's basically the amalgamation of uh, four laws as i mentioned the very first is equal remuneration act 1976 then payment of wages act 1936 then minimum wages act 1948 and payment of bonus act 1965 uh, after this there are certain chapters on payment of wages how should uh, payment of bonus be administered what should be the eligibility criteria for uh, giving the bonus to the individuals uh, what should be the proportionate reduction in bonus if any and how should they be administered then uh, they also have certain aspects related to computation of number of working days especially in context of payment of bonus then under what circumstances will the individual be disqualified from giving away the bonus for example there may be instances of fraud or maybe uh, some kind of financial embezzlement or maybe uh, some kind of fraudulent behavior misappropriate uh, misappropriation misappropriation of funds or maybe theft or any such kind of reasons may be there so how the organization is going to take cognizance of it and uh, in such situations the individual will be disqualified from bonus then uh, how should the payment be administered in terms of giving the bonus out of the surplus available and definitely the time unit for payment of bonus is also supposed to be defined there is also defined there then there is a chapter which talks about advisory board the central advisory board the state advisory board then there is a chapter which talks about chapter 6 for example talks about payment of claims dues and audit it talks about the responsibility for payment of various dues claims under the codes and procedures thereof and then there is chapter 7 which talks about inspector come facilitators so it talks about primarily about their powers there is another chapter which talks about cognizance of offenses powers of officers of appropriate government to impose the penalty and the penalties for offenses also and chapter 9 is about miscellaneous uh, things so this was uh, you know something related to code on wages and i hope by now you have a fair idea of how this code ensures timely payment of wages to the individuals minimum wages that need to be paid to the individual how it secures their right to be paid equally in terms of uh, the same input output ratio which they generate and also it has a lot of uh, 
it covers a lot of aspects related to payment of bonus also. So, this was about code on wages. Now, we move to uh, the next code and in the same manner I, as we discussed the code on wages wherein we presented the highlights first and then we discussed a bit about those things which are include, included as a part of code on social security, we will be doing it here as well. So, when we talk about code on social security, so what does it mean? So, social security is to ensure security for all kinds of workers and the central government has uh, amalgamated around 9 labor laws here, 9 labor laws have been amalgamated uh, into the social security code to prote protect them against all kinds of risk and to provide them and to secure them the rights for insurance. the pensions in certain cases, gratuity, maternity benefit etcetera. So, we will be talking about the various uh, uh, laws which have been amalgamated to form this uh, code on social security 2020 in a while, but before that let me tell you that uh, the, uh, the social security code actually expands the benefits of pension scheme to all workers of organized unorganized and uh, self employed sectors. Then uh, this is a labor code, you know this is social security code 2020 is basically uh, a new kind of code for new India and it requires for minimum service, the requirement for minimum service has been removed for payment of gratuity. Earlier there used to be a cap for receiving the uh, gratuity by the workers, but now this uh, minimum requirement for uh, payment of gratuity to the employees has been removed. Then creating a national database of workers for uh, unorganized sector through registration on portal. Employers who are employing more than 20 workers to mandatorily report uh, vacancies online a universal account number for ESICA, universal account number for ESIC, EPFO and unorganized sector workers has also been made mandatory. Then Aadhaar based universal account number to ensure seamless portability has also been introduced. So, all these things give uh, some kind of insurance against uh, all kinds of risks to the workers who are working in the organizations, be it uh, organized sector or unorganized sector or any kind of self employed uh, employment sector. So, uh, let me just brief you on uh, certain laws which have been amalgamated uh, to codify it into the code on social security 2020. So, what are these acts? The number one is Employee Compensation Act 1923. Another one is Employee State Insurance Act 1948. Then we have EPF Employee Provident Fund and Miscellaneous Provisions Act. 1952. Then we have Employment Exchange Act 1959. Then to secure the female workers and to provide them with some kind of benefits for their maternity, Maternity Benefit Act 1961 is there which entitles them to leave during their uh, maternity. Then we have another thing called as payment of gratuity act 1972, which is again very relevant and very important. Then uh, we have you know Cine workers, Cine workers welfare 
Fund Act 1981. Then we have another act called as Building and Other Construction Workers Welfare Cess Act. 1996 and last but not the least is unorganized workers social security act 2008. So, these are 9 laws and all and these laws have been uh, put into this code on social security. So, by means of it people will be protected against all kinds of risks and they will be able to lead a very uh, secure life at work. Now, this was about code on social security, uh, we have talked about certain highlights of social security, code on social security and also the various acts which have been uh, put together to form this code on social security. Now, we will uh, talk about the code on occupational safety and health. So, this code is about OSH code, it is called as occupational safety, health and working conditions. So, it is actually occupational safety, health and working conditions code 2020. So, let me present you with some of the highlights associated with this case, uh, you know, with this code. So, ba basically when we talk about OSH code, various provisions in the uh, OSH code will actually ease the lives of interstate migrant workers, because there are so many prov provisions associated with interstate migrant workers in this connection. Then uh, certain anomalies were there in context of interstate migrant workers act 1979 and they have been very beautifully very comprehensively they have been uh, recognized they have been addressed by this OSH code. Uh, earlier only workers appointed by a contractor were recognized as interstate migrant workers however under the new provision of the code they can now register themselves as interstate migrant workers on the national portal. By this provision the worker would get a legal identity which would enable them to get all the benefits of social security schemes also. So, as a part of this code, so a provision has been made for employers to provide travelling allowance annually to the interstate migrant workers typically and uh, providing of appointment letters to the workers has been made mandatory. So, earlier many of the things were happening uh, without, without putting into records, but now it has been made mandatory to provide the appointment letters to the workers and uh, so that they get their legitimate rights and it has been made mandatory. The annual health checkup of the workers is also supposed to be provided by the employers to ensure their health. So, typically it talks about uh, the occupational safety, health, working conditions of the employees. For a worker engaged in building and other construction work and who is moving to another state benefits from the building and other construction workers, CES fund will be provided under the one nation one ration card and 17 new labor codes for new India interstate migrant worker would get ration facility in the state which is working and the remaining members of the family would be able to avail of the ration facility in the state where they reside. So, there are n number of things which have been brought about and uh, there are so many nitty gritties which have been touched upon uh, which can be really instrumental in keeping the people at work and also addressing the certain aspects related to providing their uh, providing them with the uh, adequate facility to ensure their well being. Now, uh, instead of 240 days, now if a worker has worked 180 days also, he shall be entitled for to one day leave for every 20 days of work done. So, these kinds of new things which have been introduced and uh, there are several uh, women empowerment 
things which have been introduced through the labor codes right of women workers to work in all kinds of establishments workers have been given the right to work at night with their consent and it has also been ensured that the employer would make necessary arrangements to provide the required safety and facility to the workers who are working at night specially so uh, a lot of uh, things pertaining to uh, interstate migrant workers uh, empowering the women especially uh, and giving them the right to work at night and uh, ensuring that the employer also provides them with all necessary facilities required uh, for ensuring the safety of women at work have been introduced so this particular uh, occupational safety and health work condition act 2020 is basically about all these things and uh, i'll just give you some more aspects associated with the uh, occupational safety health and working conditions code 2020 so it's a it's an act to consolidate and amend the laws re regulating the osh and working conditions now i'll just uh, briefly tell you about uh, what all acts have been included in it and um, i mean what all acts have been amalgamated so we have one separate code on occupational safety and health uh, and working conditions 2020 uh, which basically uh, talks about the amalgamation of several acts like for example factories act 1948 plantation labor act 1951 then we have mines act 1952 we have working journalist and newspaper conditions of service act 1955 then we have workers gen journalist fixation of rate of wages working journalist fixation of rate of wages act 1958 then we have motor transport workers act 1961 then we have bd and cigar workers conditions of employment act 1966 then we have contract labor act 1970 sales promotion employee conditions of service act 1976 besides this there are a number of other acts which i'll be talking about like for example in 79 inter state migrant workmen act 1979 dock workers act 1986 building and other construction workers act 1996 cine workers and cinema theaters workers act 
So primarily these are uh, some of the uh, laws uh, which now have been amalgamated into this code on occupational uh, safety and health and uh, this actually sets the base for uh, the code on occupational safety and health. Uh, next we move to a very important code on industrial disputes which is called as uh, code on industrial dispute 2020. So, this is basically industrial relations code let me just give you about give you a few points reg regarding what this industrial dispute uh, code is all about. So, this industrial dispute code is about the amalgamation of three labor laws into the industrial relations code. The central government has taken steps for safeguarding the interest of trade union as well as workers. So, in this code all possible steps have been taken for industrial units and workers so that the disputes do not arise in the future industrial relations code 2020. So, there are few highlights again in case of job loss a worker will get benefit under Atal Bimit Vyakti Kalyan Yojana under the Atal Bimit Vyakti Kalyan Yojana, a worker of organized sector who loses his job, he gets financial aid from the government. So, this is the type of unemployment allowance, the benefit for which the uh, is admissib admissible to the workers covered under the ESI scheme. So, this is a sigh of huge sigh of relief for many. At the time of retrenchment, a worker would be provided 15 days wages for reskilling. So, if the individual is retrenched from his present job position, and he wants to upskill himself, he wants to reskill himself. So, 15 days salary, 15 days uh, wages would be given to him for reskilling so that he becomes further employable. Then, uh, faster justice, to the, justice uh, to the workers through the tribunal is also ensured, and uh, industrial tribunals to have two members to facilitate faster disposal of cases. Having 51 percent votes. In industrial establishment, the trade unions having 51 percent of the votes shall be recognized as a sole negotiating union which can make all arrangements with the employers. So, there are few things which have been uh, put into practice under this code on industrial dispute 2020. Now, uh, it is important for us uh, to understand to further understand uh, the various uh, things which are essentially forming a part of this industrial uh, dispute act. Uh, so, basically industrial dispute code 2020, it is an act to consolidate the rules and laws relating to trade unions, conditions of employment, in industrial establishment on undertaking and investigation of and settlement of industrial disputes. So, basically uh, there are several chapters uh, like for example, chapter 2 of industrial uh, code, industrial dispute code talks about forming bipartite kind of forums like for example, work committee, uh, then uh, grievance redressal committee, then chapter 3 talks about trade unions what should be the criteria for registration of trade union, what should be the provisions contained in the uh, contribution of trade unions and uh, how can the immunity from civil uh, suit in certain cases be sought, enforceability of agreements, then there is a chapter particularly related to the standing orders, which relate to making of the standing orders by the state government, central government and uh, preparation of draft. standing orders. Notice of change, there are chapters related to mechanism for prohibition of industrial sorry, uh, there are mechanisms related to resolution of industrial disputes also uh, related to conciliation of uh, the officers, then uh, industrial tribunals and also disqualifications etcetera. So, there are chapters which primarily talk about the strikes and lockouts and how they need to be addressed, what are the rules and regulations associated with strikes and lockouts. Then there is a chapter related to 
uh, how the organization should take a cognizance of layoff, retrenchment of employees. So, how should they be addressed? What should happen in terms of retrenchment of employees? You know, in case of retrenchment and uh, closure of any business, I mean, uh, how should these kinds of issues be resolved? And certainly, uh, there is a chapter which typically talks about the provisions related to layoff, retrenchment, closure in certain establishments. Then there are chapters related to workers' uh, uh, reskilling fund. So, there is a new fund which has been introduced, which is called as workers' reskilling fund. So, all these things are actually introduced as a part of it. And uh, by now, I think you have a fair understanding of what it looks and how it uh, should actually be uh, seen. And for a thorough understanding of uh, these uh, wages, though we have presented some of the highlights, we have understood some of the highlights associated with four codes on uh, labors. Like for example, we talked about code on wages, code on uh, occupational safety, health and work conditions, then social security code and industrial dispute code 2020. Uh, yet for uh, in-depth understanding of these uh, codes, these may be referred to. And uh, for uh, this, uh, the website of Ministry of Labor and Employment can be quickly referred to. And these uh, codes with, you know, with all the chapters and uh, detailed chapters have been provided there, they can be referred to. So, with this we come to the end of it and I hope you have a fair understanding of all the codes that we discussed and also why are the labor codes, codes important, why are labor laws important for any organization, for any country and uh, with this we come to the end of it. Thank you so much. <laughs>